What's going on y'all? Welcome back to another video. So I have finally installed live scope on my boat. So I just wanted to make a quick video of how I installed it. I feel like it's a little bit different than how most people install theirs. So starting up here at the head unit, I actually already had this graph on my boat. This is the Garmin Ecomaps Plus 93 SV. So this unit is actually not compatible with the new live scope plus, which kind of sucks. I was kind of bummed about it, but it is compatible with the older transducer, the LSV 32. And LSV 34 is the new transducer, the LifeScope Plus. And since they did just drop the new transducer, the LSV 32s are all on sale. So I ended up getting a pretty good deal on it, which I'm, I'm pretty stoked on. You know, eventually one day in the future, I want to get, you know, the new transducer. Hopefully by then they'll have an even better one out and just get like a giant screen up here, like a TV up here. That's the goal eventually. But for now, this is what we got and this is what I'm working with. And it has been working good. I've actually had this installed on my boat for the last like month or so. And I've had it out in the water probably six or seven times now and i just wanted to make sure everything was working smoothly before i made this video so now let's go ahead and get into the way i decided to power the black box and the unit and that is with a lithium battery i went with the amped outdoors 32 amp hour lithium battery i decided to go with this over just connecting it to my cranking battery because i've kind of heard some bad stuff about connecting it to your cranking battery people complain about how the power runs out really quick on it and i also wanted to avoid having to snake wires all the way up from here here, all the way down through here and all the way back to my cranking battery. It's a lot of annoying, very tedious work. And so that is why I went with the Amped Outdoors lithium battery. And I also went with the Ice Hole Power Box. And this just seemed like really easy. All I have to do is feed my wires through from up here. And I just keep this little box back here in the rod locker. This thing right here, which is called their boat box. And it's basically just a very simple version of their ice fishing boxes. And the reason I got this is to not only house your battery to keep it safe, but also to have a switch. As you can see up here, we've got two switches and two plugs, and they also have inline fuses in them. That's just something that I heard in every video that I watched about live scope is to make sure you have some type of fuse and make sure you have some type of switch. The reason for the switch is because your black box will run all day if you don't turn it off. Even if it's not turned on, even if your screen's not turned on, the black box will still be running and pulling power. Being able to cut that power off if you need to is very, very convenient. You take it out, charge your battery inside that's another thing i like about it is that i can take the battery out keep it in a nice temperature controlled environment and i did go with the 32 amp hour 14.8 volt lithium ion nmc battery they have a lithium ion phosphate i believe is what it's called and then they have what they call the nmc i don't know really what the difference is between the two but i know that one is a 14.8 volt and one is a 12.8 volt i've heard some rumors i don't know if it's true or not but i've heard some rumors that using a higher voltage battery can get you a better picture of the live scope on your unit i've heard some people say that it's just a myth i've heard some people say that it really just depends on you know what type of screen and stuff you have it really doesn't affect it that much and i've also heard people swear by the higher voltage and so unfortunately i won't really be able to test it out either this is the only time i've ever used live scope has been on my boat i mean i've seen it in videos and i have seen it in person like maybe once but i never really used it didn't really get to spend some time on it and, and get a good look at the picture so i can't really claim anything for myself as far as that higher voltage myth goes but i decided to go with the higher voltage just because i have an older unit i had to go with the older transducer and so i was like well i might as well go ahead and even if it is a myth i might as well just go ahead and get the 14.8 just to possibly increase my chances of having a, a better quality picture and having just a better time out here on the water so i actually was trying to get the 48 amp hour battery and the only one i could find was the 32 amp hour so the reason i wanted the 48 amp hour battery is just so i can make sure i have a lot of power if i ever go on like i don't know maybe a camping trip or something if i ever don't have a way to charge or maybe forget to charge my battery i don't have to worry about it as much because i'll have a lot of extra power if i needed it unfortunately and just could not find the 48 amp hour. So I had to go with the 32, which should still last me a pretty long time, but I would have rather had the 48 if I could have had it my way. But the 32 has been working really good though. So I'm pretty pleased with it. First thing I had to do was unconnect the power of my unit. And actually it was kind of funny. I went to try to figure out where my unit was powered by, because I honestly didn't know. I had someone else install this for me and they actually connected it to my nav lights. And so I unconnected it from my nav lights and I had 
just the power cord running through here and I wanted to see if it would reach all the way to the back of this rod locker and unfortunately it did not. I had to go to a hardware store, get some new wire. I actually got 10 gauge wire and if you have a boat similar to mine, you're not going to need any extensions or you are going to have to add any wire to the black box, but you are going to have to add some to your unit. Or you can keep your battery box up here closer to the front. I just thought it would be safer down there in the corner. The ice hole power boxes come with these awesome heat shrink tubes to splice your wires together to the plugs that also come with the box. They also give you two plugs with inline fuses and two without. I used one with an inline fuse for the unit wire and I used one without an inline fuse for the black box because it already comes with one on it. After that I drilled a hole for the wires Then I connected the network wire to the unit and fed it through the hull of the boat. Then I went into the locker and grabbed it with this snake hook and pulled it through. And then tested to see where I needed to mount the black box. After picking a good spot, I went ahead and mounted the black box with some nuts and bolts. And then I took the transducer wire and fed it through the hull and pulled it through with the snake hook again. After that, I plugged everything in, tested it out to make sure everything is working. It was, and so then I went ahead and mounted the transducer with the perspective mount from Garmin. Then I secured the wires using electrical tape and not zip ties because you can actually damage the wire using zip ties. Then I just organized all the wires, made it look nice, and I was done. A lot easier only having to snake it back to here than having to go all the way to the back of the boat. And if I need to go in and fix something or if something happens, you never know what might happen. It's just going to be a lot easier to only have to deal with it up here on the front of the boat. You should be able to get it done in just a couple hours. It's really not that hard of a process. And so far, everything has been working good. I've been catching lots of fish with it. All right, y'all, there it is. As you can see up here, I'm getting 15.5 volts. When I first get out here, it's normally at about 16.5 around there somewhere. And I've been out here for all morning. It's like midday right now, like one or two o'clock. So no problems yet. Knock on wood, you never really know what's gonna happen, but so far so good. And I'm pretty pleased with this. So if you guys have any questions or critiques about the install that I did, definitely leave them down in the comments below. I got some awesome live scope content on the way. I've actually been filming the live scope. So you guys will be able to see exactly what I'm seeing in the videos and I want to do that every time I do it because I just hate seeing those guys you know they're standing in the front of the boat and they're like oh there's one you can't see anything you can't see what's going on on the screen I wanted to do it to where you can see everything going on so click this video right here if you want to check it out thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video peace oh there's one that's a good one, dude.